All right, guys, I'm going to start videoing some of the stuff I do down here. Uh, this is, some, I think, it's pretty interesting because I, I can't find anywhere on the Internet. There's a lot of videos on running uh, old equipment and uh, particularly this style. This is, a, this is an RK LeBlonde lathe. It's 18-inch lathe. This is probably around the 1900s. Um, I've been working on getting it going, and once I get it going, there's a bunch of projects and stuff that I want to get into videoing and and uh, posting up on YouTube. Um, <coughs> here is uh, this is the tailstock on this lathe. It's a MT4 Morse Taper 4. Um, it's a big tail tailstock. I had all I can do to lift this up on here. Uh, one of the projects I want to do. Uh, you see, I got this running really nice real nice and smooth I mean I, this is beautiful nice and smooth now uh, one of the things I want to do here is I want to put inch increments on this on this uh, tailstock here uh, so I'm going to show a video on how I do that on the milling machine that I have um, that's that's one of the first projects I kind of want to work on once I get this thing going uh, I've been working on Getting the transmission over there uh, set up so that it's everything's centered and square. Um, so anyway, more about the lathe. It's got here is the thread dial, so it, this lathe does have the possibility of threading, and I have all the change gears in there, in which I plan on setting up somewhere here, nice where I can uh, keep them all separated. Um, so yeah, it does have threading capability. One of the projects I got to work on is the thread screw is a little chewed up a little bit, and I think I want to uh, make a new one of those. So that's that's one more thing, um, one more project that I'm going to be put, putting up here on a video for for you guys to see. Um, I did already have this whole saddle apart, and. Uh, I had to do some work on the inside of it because someone before me must have crashed it, and you could no longer use the this here. You can never, you couldn't use the uh, uh, to move the saddle forward and back. Um, so I got that working good. Uh, this lever here, everyone, a lot of people on the internet, it's always asking what this lever here is for, and this lever here is to adjust the back, the backlash in your rack and pinion. So, over time, the gears wear out, the rack and pinion wears out, things wear out, and this is to adjust that so that it, you know, has that nice feel. Um, this is a clutch mechanism. You screw it in, and it provides power to your saddle for, this actually does have power cross slide. And you pull, let's see if I can get it here. Mm. This should come out. Let's see. Come on. There it goes. All right. So you provide power to your cross slide. Uh, this here, this lever here, is a brake. This is a brake for your uh, your cross slide. So once you get it where you want it, you just put the brakes onto it. It stays pretty solid, works good. Uh, this lever here is to engage and disengage the half nut. And this lever here is forward and reverse on this power on this power bar here, this power uh, shaft. I'm not sure what they call it, but uh, it does have both. It has a lead screw and that power shaft. Um, I've had this cross slide torn all apart and it is in beautiful shape. You can still see all the scraping, you know, from from the factory when they when they built this. Um, can't see the numbers very good here, and to be honest with you, I can't either. Uh, it's very they're very hard to see. Um, I, I think whoever I think maybe someday I might do a video or something. I'm going to try to 
maybe make these numbers a little bit easier to see because they, they are hard. Um, things are worn out too. Things have faded. Um, as far as accuracy on this thing goes, I mean, it is super, super nice. Uh, as, as far as I can tell, there is some wear in the bed. When you line up dead center to dead center on these things, I mean, it is perfect. Um, I mean, it just lines up perfectly. Um, yeah, so there is some wear. There is some wear. You can see visible wear here. It's not very much. It's probably about a thou or so. Um, you know, I guess it's to be expected for this, uh, this age. Um, there is one thing though, this is an 18 inch lathe, LeBlanc, and I have not found another one online. I have Google searched and Google searched and Google searched. Nothing on YouTube, nothing online. I see 16 inches, rare, I see a lot of 14s and some 12s, but I have not, I have yet to find any 18 inch lathe. This is a big one um, in operation, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting some video on that. Uh, I think that's going to come out really nice. Um, it has another tag here that says it was uh, miscellaneous department of Niles Bennett Pond Company. So I, I believe this is, that was a used machinery sales dealer that put their tag on there. Um, it does have Babbitt bearings, and I got grease fittings in there to go with it. And grease, from what I was reading, is grease is the better lubrication method for these Babbitt bearings, but oil is less um, maintenance. So when you put the grease fittings in, you got to grease it quite often, maybe even a few times as you're even doing uh, your projects. Just that you don't want you want you don't want these Babbitt bearings to wear out because uh, they're kind of a pain to replace. Um, has back gears, disengage. Um, and the project, oh yeah, here's the here's the back of it. If anybody's wondering, it has all the change gears. And now I got I got a flat belt ordered that'll run this um, for that power power bar that uh, power drive shaft down there. So I got a flat bar or flat belt coming that'll that'll run this. And uh, and these all the gears have all the teeth. I mean, it's just it's in really good shape for what it is now. Um, the project that I'm working on here is this is an old Willie's Jeep transmission. I'd say 19 1950s, early 50s. And what it has here is it's a three-speed transmission with a reverse. Okay, it's a three-speed transmission with a reverse, and it's also got high and low got high and low here so my my idea here is the low only works in four-wheel drive but it doesn't matter we're not it's not attached to anything so it gives me a whole nother range of gears for low and high and put it back into you can put it into four-wheel drive in and out here um, but yep you got high low and three gears so anyway that's that's the transmission I'm looking to hook up to it there's not enough room in the shop here to put a counter shaft pulley which I do have down there there's not enough room here to hook it hook it up <coughs> so uh, anyway that's the tour of the old RK LeBlanc 1905 lathe um, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but it has a lot number, lot 50, number 6. Um, this shop's messy now, but I'm going to get it cleaned up, and I'm going to start start putting out some parts in this thing. Um, right now I'm working on getting the old electric engine running and getting that attached to this wheel, this pulley. And I got flat belts coming. I'm going to power the flat belt drive off the lathe. This is an old drum they had on these old Willie's Jeeps. Uh, it, had, it has drum brakes. So it has a drum brake lever right here. So I'm going to use that as like a, a lathe brake as well. 
but I got another flat belt coming that's going to go on here and it's going to run nicely. But that's what I'm doing. I'm working on getting everything set up so I can put out some more content on this because, uh, man, this is going to be fun to run. This is a uh, this is over 100 years old. This is almost this is almost 120 years old, and I'm looking forward to turning parts on this as much as I can. Uh, I think it'll be a great joy. So if uh, if all you guys want to stay tuned, you know, I'll put out more content on lathe on this lathe and uh, on my milling machine and uh, it'll be good it'll be fun alright see you guys next time